Does it make you mad or do you get frustrated when, when, when people who voted against the bill, like Rick Scott and Representative Tony Gonzalez, don't refuse the money and then actually make a big deal about having gotten the money for their constituents? It is striking that people went to the floor of the House or Senate and said, no, this infrastructure funding should not happen. And then they can't wait to be there uh, when that funding is coming to their district. Mm -hmm. But Do you, you make know. them hold the big check? <laughs> <laughs> I've thought about that. I might try that. It'd be uh, good. You and the check and them. But I also, there's nothing better than seeing a skeptic become a convert. And so, uh, you know, I think, I call it the sincerest form of flattery. If somebody was against your policy, and then when it's actually benefiting people who live in their communities, yes. they can't hug you close enough. And I'll say this, I mean, politics aside, the people who live in those communities shouldn't be punished of because their senator or their house member said no to this funding. We're going to serve everybody equally. I suspect you would say something like that. I suspected you would have the, the, the best interest of the American people at heart. Well, thanks. I'd, I'd, I'd like to think that's how we think about mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it comes from the top. I mean, don't get me wrong. It, it can be frustrating politically yeah. uh, when, when you see that sort of stuff go on. But, you know, look, this is, this is part of a pattern that we've often seen where uh, many uh, congressional Republicans mm -hmm. take stances that seem to be more about the problem than about the solution. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you look at even the things that they talk about the most often, mm -hmm. uh, immigration, inflation. I mean, name, of, of all the things congressional Republicans have proposed policy-wise, can anybody name the top five things that they've suggested to fight inflation? Can anyone name three? How about one? You know, they voted no on the Inflation Reduction Act that was about lowering prices for Americans. And I would have loved nothing more than to have a debate between the Democratic Re Inflation Reduction Act and the Republican Inflation Reduction Act on the House of the Floor and Senate and argued over which one was better, but there was only one, and it was ours. And luckily, it passed. This is Pete Buttigieg with Stephen Colbert as the White House continues not just touting its major legislative achievements ahead of midterms this November, but also calling out those Republicans who did everything in their power to stop legislation like the Inflation Reduction Act from becoming law, which to be clear is the right thing to do here because for far too long Republicans have relied on a weak Democratic Party not pushing back. And so Democrats would propose popular legislation, Republicans would vote against it, and when it got signed into law, there you'd see all those Republicans lining up, doling out big checks to their constituents and local businesses for grants and highways and bridges, all thanks to money that they tried to prevent from being allocated. And they know, rightly, that the Democrats weren't willing to call them out. But fortunately, it looks like that's not the case anymore. And by the way, it's not just Pete who's doing that important work here. Here's Joe Biden making the exact same point. There's a report. You guys can, as they say, as my grandkids say, Google it. But the report that came out to CNN and says, Republicans call Biden infrastructure program socialism. And then they ask for the money. And it goes through all the Republicans, who, the most conservative Republicans who call it socialism and how they're asking for it. A guy named Paul Gosser, he's written three separate letters to the administration asking for projects in his district. He says it enhanced the quality of life, that ease congestion, boost the economy. Voted against it says it's all socialism. Go down the list. Kentucky Representative Andy Barr, the biggest socialist agenda. Three different projects he wants, citing the importance of safety and growth of his district. Rand Paul, I go down the list, look it up. Socialism. I didn't know there were that many socialist Republicans. Think about it. I'm, I'm serious. Let's get serious about it taking care of ordinary people, regular people like I grew up. Folks, look, you can't make this stuff up. You got to say, and I got to say, I was surprised to see so many socialists in the Republican caucus. <laughs> Weird how all those Republicans who derided the dangerous socialists, those reckless spenders, themselves just so happen to be dangerous socialists and reckless spenders. Funny how things change once they're not parroting bumper sticker slogans on Fox News. And here's the point that Buttigieg brings up that I think is the most revealing. That for all of the wailing about inflation and immigration and all these other issues by Republicans, which, let's be honest here, do require some sort of solution and are not by any means fine, 
They offer no solutions themselves. Honestly, can you name a single solution that Republicans have introduced to actually confront any of these issues? Republicans had full control of government under Donald Trump, who literally ran on immigration from Mexico as an issue. And what permanent immigration reform did they put forward? What legislation was signed into law? Nothing, because they need this issue as a talking point to wield against Democrats. It's not about solving anything, it's about exploiting the problem for votes. And then there's the issue of inflation. Now, first of all, not that the internet is a place for nuance, inflation is a global issue. We've got 8.2% inflation here, but Mexico has 8.7%, Italy and Spain have 8.9%, Europe has 9.9%, Germany has 10%, the UK has 10.1%, the Netherlands has 14.5%. So if you're one of those people pretending that Joe Biden caused inflation, then you must think that somehow Joe Biden's been elected president of the entire world. But with that said, there are steps that you can take to reduce the pain caused by inflation, and that's by lowering costs for people where we can, which is precisely what Democrats have sought to do. The Inflation Reduction Act allowed the government to negotiate lower drug prices. That will lower costs. It kept out-of-pocket drug costs and Medicare at $2,000 a year. That'll lower costs. It kept ACA subsidies in place so that health insurance is cheaper. That will lower costs. It caps the cost of insulin for Medicare recipients at $35 that will lower costs. Democrats have passed bills preventing price gouging at the pump. That would lower costs. Democrats have passed bills bolstering renewable energy while OPEC continues to raise gas prices. That will lower costs. Democrats have proposed bills funding domestic chip production in the U.S. That would lower costs. Democrats have passed the PACT Act funding health care for sick veterans. That will lower costs. Democrats have forgiven student loan debt. That will lower costs. It was Democrats who got all of these bills over the finish line, and most of these have zero, zero Republican support. So while Republicans are right to point out that Americans are hurting right now, they undermine their credibility by actually preventing any bills from relieving that pain from passing. In fact, in my interview this past week with Stacey Abrams, she brought up this exact point regarding her opponent, Brian Kemp. So everyone is concerned about inflation and the economy. People are in pain. But what we have to recognize is that inflation is a global issue. And so the best thing a governor can do is reduce the cost that the governor can actually influence. That's housing healthcare and education. And on all three metrics, Brian Kemp refuses to act. Georgia has the money to create need-based aid in the state of Georgia to reduce student debt. He won't spend it. Georgia has the money to actually attack affordable housing issues. He won't spend it, $400 million sitting unspent because he won't spend the money. And we know with healthcare, Georgia is one of only 12 states in the nation that refuses to expand Medicaid. And in real terms, this means that we've lost six hospitals, including a level one trauma center in a state that only has five to begin with. So the entire Atlanta region of 5.7 million people has one level one trauma center left. But on top of that, 1,700 people are about to lose their jobs and community members who simply need you know, access to a doctor are now going to be told once again that their healthcare costs are going to go up because Brian Kemp doesn't want to accept the money they've already paid into the system, $3.5 billion. And it's not just in Georgia. In district after district, state after state, the people who are exploiting voters' economic pain are the same ones entrenching it. So if you're a voter, just believe your eyes. We all know that high costs are an issue. We know that people are hurting right now. So as you cast your ballots, do you want to reward the party that tried to entrench that pain so that they would have a talking point in midterms? A party that tried to block legislation to give you a break because they didn't think you deserved it? A party that's proven that you're not their priority because you aren't donating tens of thousands of dollars to their re-election campaigns? Or do you want the party that actually passed the Inflation Reduction Act, passed the CHIPS Act, passed the American Rescue Plan, the Infrastructure Law, the PACT Act, forgave student loan debt? When it comes to these politicians, don't listen to what they say, watch what they do. Before you go, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. You can click the thumbnail right here on this screen. And if you want to support my work even further, the best way is to subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. There you can check out my interviews with major players in the world of politics, including President Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, Elizabeth Warren, Katie Porter, Jamie Raskin, and so many more. Plus other interviews that live exclusively on the podcast. That link is also right here on this screen, or just search No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen wherever you listen to podcasts.